Testing, one, two, three, three, two, one. Testing, <coughs> excuse me. Testing, testing, one, two, three, three, two, one. All right. Welcome to Empty Cross Ministries Bible Study. I'm Brother David. The name of the program is KJV Exposed. That is King James Version Exposed. Because we use the King James Version, we look at each verse, break it down, bring it to life, and expose the meaning. Today we're going to continue our study in the Gospel of John, chapter 18, and this will be part 2 of chapter 18. And we're going to open up here once again with the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right. As I said, we're going to be looking at the Gospel of John, chapter 18, and this is going to be part two. Here we're going to see Jesus standing trial before Caiaphas, then before Pilate. John, chapter 18, verse 22 reads, And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest's? So, in the previous lesson, Jesus had told them that he had not spoken in secret, but openly, where anyone could hear him. We pick up in this verse. This officer had no idea who he slapped. This slap was the way they did someone thought to be insolent. Perhaps he thought Jesus cut the high priest short with his answer. <clears throat> John chapter 18, verse 23 reads, Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Jesus was asking for a fair trial, while his opponents, who had already decided on the sentence, look at chapter 11, verses 47 through 57, while the had no intention of providing one. Let me say that again. Jesus was asking for a fair trial here. Why his opponents, who had already decided on the sentence, had no intention of providing a fair trial. In Matthew, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus taught, If someone smites you on the one cheek, turn unto him the other also. Jesus appeals to this officer's good conscience here. John chapter 18, verse 24 reads, Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas the high priest. Annas recognized that he was not getting anywhere with Jesus and sent him to Caiaphas because if Jesus was to be brought before Pilate for execution, the legal accusation must be brought by the current reigning high priest. That would be Caiaphas in his capacity as chairman of the Sanhedrin. Annas sends Jesus to the high priest Caiaphas. In verses 25 through 27, we see the final fulfillment of Jesus' prediction that Peter would deny Jesus three times. We see that in Matthew chapter 26, verse 34. John 18, verse 24. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said, Therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. We see here a progression of Peter's denial. Perhaps the woman went back and spoke to others about believing who Peter was. At any rate, Peter is asked again, are you one of the disciples of this Jesus who is being questioned? Peter is very emphatic when he says, I am not. John chapter 18 verse 26 reads, One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, 
whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? It seems a large group of the high priest's servants had gone to bring Jesus back. Malchus, whose ear was cut off by Peter, had some of his relatives among those who came to capture Jesus. He would have looked more closely at Peter since Peter had cut Malchus's ear off. I do not understand after Jesus put his ear back that they did not realize who Jesus was. This kinsman of Malchus says, Didn't I see you? John chapter 18 verse 27 reads, Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. In Mark 14 verse 71, we read that Peter actually cursed and began to swear at the last denial, just as Jesus had told Peter after the third denial, the cock crew. I need to get a drink of water here. <clears throat> from verses 18, from verses chapter 18 to verse from verses chapter 18, verse 28, to chapter 19, verse 16. This section deals with Jesus' trial before Pilate. Although Pilate appears in every scene here, Jesus himself and the nature of his kingdom occupy center stage. Should be defiled, they will not enter the house of a Gentile and thus cause ceremonial defilement but they are willing to commit murder. When Pilate asks for the accusation, they admit there is none deserving of death by Roman law. Look at verses 30 and 31. Pilate realizes that Jesus has been delivered to him because of their jealousy. John chapter 18 verse 28 reads, Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. The judgment hall was the headquarters of the commanding officer of the Roman military camp, or the headquarters of the Roman military government. For example, Pilate, whose normal whose normal headquarters was in Caesarea, in the palace that Herod the Great had built for himself. However, Pilate and his predecessors made it a point to be in Jerusalem during the feast in order to quell any riots. Jerusalem became his praetorium or headquarters. The word early is ambiguous. Most likely it refers to around 6 a.m., since many Roman officials began their day very early and finished by 10 or 11 a.m. Jewish oral law gives evidence that a Jew who entered the dwelling places of Gentiles became, became ceremonially unclean. Their remaining outside in the colonnade avoided that pollution. John loads this statement with great irony by noting the chief priest scrupulousness in the matter of ceremonial cleansing, when all the time they were incurring incomparably greater moral defilement by their proceedings against Jesus. The Hall of Judgment was a worldly court. This is where the Romans judged when they were in Jerusalem. This was very early morning, possibly even before 6 a.m., as the other trials had taken place during the night. These high priests would not go into this building because it was a Gentile court. Passover was at hand. They were so caught up in the law that they could not recognize the Savior of the world. John chapter 18 verse 29 reads, Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? The question formally opened the Roman civil phase of proceeding against Jesus, in contrast to the religious phase before the Jews in verse 24. The fact that Roman troops were used at the arrest proves that the Jewish authorities communicated something about this case 
to pilot in advance, although they most likely had expected Pilate to confirm their judgment against Jesus and order his death sentence. Pilate ordered instead a fresh hearing in his presence. Pilate is the Roman governor in authority. He realizes these Jews have peculiar customs about Passover, and he comes out to judge this matter. His question is, what do you accuse him of? John chapter 18, verse 30. They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. The definition of a malefactor is a criminal, someone who has committed a crime who has been legally convicted of a crime. This is an evasive answer. Really, they do not have a legitimate complaint to make. They know they are limited in the severity of punishment they can do, and they want Pilate to do their dirty work for them. John chapter 18, verse 31 reads, Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. The Jews, Lord, the Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. When Rome took over Judea and began direct rule through a prefect in 6 AD, capital, ju capital judgment, that is the right to execute, was taken away from the Jews and given to the Roman governor. Capital punishment was the most jealously guarded of all the attributes in Roman provincial administration. Now we see their evil plan. Their law prohibits them from killing him, and they have brought him to Pilate to do their dirty work for them, as, his, as I just stated. They want to kill him, but they do not want to take the blame for the killing. As, I have, as we have said before, they are jealous and afraid that Jesus will dethrone them. They do not want to lose their status or their followers. John chapter 18 verse 32 reads, That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Jesus said that he would die by being lifted up. We see that in chapter 3 verse 14, chapter 8 verse 28, chapter 12, verses 32 and 33. If the Jews had executed him, it would have been by throwing him down and stoning him. But God providentially controlled all the political procedures to assure that when the sentence was finally passed, he would be crucified by the Romans and not stoned by the Jews, as was Stephen. Look at Acts chapter 7, verse 59. The Jews may have preferred this form of execution based on Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 23. We see here that Pilate represents the Gentile world and these high priests and other Hebrew leaders represent the Jews. With God, there are only two types of people in the world, Jew and Gentile. We see here that they are both guilty of the death of Jesus. Jesus, in every little detail, fulfills the scriptures. John chapter 18, verse 33. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Pilate went away from the accusers back to the hall. His question to Jesus is not, Have you committed a crime, but are you king of the Jews? John skips it here, but Pilate's wife had warned him of a dream she had about Jesus. She told Pilate to have nothing to do with this. John chapter 18 verse 34 reads, Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Again, Jesus demanded witnesses. Jesus speaks to the conscience of Pilate. We see here that Pilate is on the defensive, not Jesus. He says to Pilate, in a sense, are you going to condemn me on hearsay? In verses 35 through 38, Pilate's only concern is whether Jesus has incited rebellion against Rome. Jesus' answers show this is not the case. For this reason, 
Pilate finds no fault with him. John chapter 18 verse 35 reads, Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priest have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Pilate has no evidence of wrongdoing by Jesus. He is sincere in wanting to know what crime Jesus has committed. He feels Jesus must have done something or his own people would not have brought him accusing him. John chapter 18 verse 36 reads, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. By this phrase, my kingdom is not of this world, Jesus meant that his kingdom is not connected to earthly, political, and national entities, nor, nor does it have its origin in the evil world system that is in rebellion against God. If his kingdom was of this world, he would have fought. The kingships of this world preserve themselves by fighting with force. Messiah's kingdom does not originate in the efforts of man, but with the Son of Man forcefully and decisively conquering sin in the lives of his people and someday conquering the evil world system at his second coming when he establishes the earthly form of his kingdom. His kingdom was no threat to the national identity of Israel or the political and military identity of Rome. It exists in the spiritual dimension until the end of the age. Look at Revelation chapter 11 verse 15. Jesus here is speaking to Pilate in a way that Pilate understands. Pilate knows that earthly kings have armies that fight for them. Jesus is telling Pilate this is a spiritual kingdom and not a physical kingdom. John chapter 18 verse 37 reads, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Jesus here is telling Pilate that the things which are happening to him now are things he must do. Jesus says, All I have done is tell the truth. Those who recognize the truth, hear me. John chapter 18, verse 38 reads, Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. In response to Jesus' mention of truth in verse 37, Pilate responded rhetorically with cynicism, convinced that no answer existed to the question. The retort proved that he was not among those who the Father had given to the Son. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. That's verse 37. John made it clear that Jesus was not guilty of any sin, of any sin or crime, thus exhibiting the severe injustice and guilt of both the Jews and Romans who executed him. Pilate was truly interested. This was not a play on words. He was an intelligent man. Pilate knew that Jesus was not guilty of any crime. John chapter 18 verse 39 reads, But ye have a custom, but ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Hence Pilate knowing of Jesus' innocence, tries to get the people to request the release of Jesus at the Passover. Pilate knows for sure that Jesus is innocent. John 18, verse 40, Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. The word robber means one who seizes plunder and may depict not only a robber, but a terrorist or a guerrilla fighter who participated in bloody insurrection. 
Look at Mark chapter 15, verse 7. Barabbas was a robber. He was guilty of what he was charged. Jesus was not guilty of any crime. Pilate knew that jealousy and envy had caused them to try to do away with Jesus. Pilate thought that by offering to free one for Passover that they would surely choose, choose Jesus to free. He had underestimated their hatred for the Son of God. The chief priests and elders, that is leaders of the church, have power over the people and they persuaded the people to ask for Barabbas instead of Jesus to be freed. This has been Empty Cross Ministries Bible Study. I'm Brother David. Once again, the name of the program is KJV Exposed. That is King James Version Exposed. Because we look at each verse, break it down, bring it to life, and expose the meaning. Stay tuned next time, and we will be delving into the Gospel of John, chapter 19. And we're going to close out here with a word of prayer, uh, the Lord's Prayer once again. And folks, be safe, be blessed, stay in the Word, and write the Word upon your heart. And let's close out with the, Lord, with the Lord's Prayer again. I just knocked my microphone over. Let's close out with the Lord's Prayer once again. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Until next time.